The Law Biz Podcast will begin after a brief word from today's sponsor, Answering Legal. Visit answeringlegal.com to learn more about our 24-7 virtual receptionist team. I've been utilizing Answering Legal for my firm since 2015, and truth be told, it was a game changer for me. I can be anywhere, and I'm getting my phones answered by Answering Legal. A strategic partner, as I call Answering Legal, provides a great reward. What is that reward? It's time. Time for whatever I want to do. As a private practitioner, I would highly recommend Answering Legal to other private practitioners. Now, every call goes answered. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Law Biz presented by Answering Legal. I'm your host and the founder of On Track Coach, Gary Mitchell. I created this podcast to bring you some innovative and inspirational stories from lawyers and other legal marketing professionals about some amazing things they're doing in the business of law. Today's episode is entitled Content Marketing, Why It's Critical to Law Firms. And joining me today is the CEO of Spotlight Branding, Mark Siniglia. Welcome to the Law Biz, Mark, and thank you for joining me. Hey, Gary. Glad to be here. Well, jump right in, Mark. I know how passionate you are about content marketing. Um, we do actually share. Uh, I, I don't know. I think you might be a little more passionate than I am. But why is content marketing so critical to law firm growth, law firm marketing in, in general? No, yeah, I appreciate that. Well, I, I kind of like to throw this out there. You know, we I believe that content marketing is the foundation of marketing. And the short version of what I mean by that is no matter where a, a lead or a prospect or a potential client comes from, they're going to interact with your content in some capacity, right? So whether they're referred to you or they found you through an ad that you're running, they're, they're going to go to your website at some point, and that's full of content. If you have a social media presence, they may check that out. Um, if you have an email newsletter, uh, you know, and, and you get their contact information, that's a form of content that, you know, so when you actually think about it, every referral, every lead, every prospect, I mean, even your referral sources are going to interact with your content in some capacity if you have content. And, and so what we find is that when content marketing is done well, it actually enhances every avenue of marketing uh, that a law firm is doing. Um, now, it's funny because my approach has always been when I'm coaching clients, I always refer to it as educational marketing. Yes. Right? Um, because they, the lawyers have this amazing library, if, if you will, of knowledge and experience. And more than a lot of diff other professions, they've got so much potential content to use in their marketing. And it's genuine. Right. It's not pushing or pulling. It's demonstrating knowledge and experience. So we're we're on the same page there. OK, uh, now getting a little more strategic, your top strategies within content marketing. What are they, Mark? Yeah, well, you know, I was kind of thinking what we would do is kind of un unpack, you know, like I, I want your listeners to be able to walk away from this episode knowing like how to actually do this themselves. Right. So I I'd love to kind of give away some of our secret sauce and, and, and what we do. So um, to answer your question kind of in a broad stroke, you know, my, my biggest tips for content marketing are really what you already just hinted at. Number one, understand it's educational. We talk about how you need to give to receive. Like you, you need to give away information, much like I intend to do on this podcast. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to give away um, how a small law firm should do, do content marketing. Um, but the other piece of advice I would give on kind of a macro level is to really understand the role that it plays. Um, because if you are looking for it to do something it's not meant to do, you're going to be really disappointed. And an example of that would be, you know, I don't actually expect a law firm to get a lot of business from social media. That's not the role social media necessarily should play. But I do expect that their social media is a way for them to stay in touch with their network. I do expect that social media is a way for them to kind of just build their own credibility. And, and, and so, you know, the, the biggest advice is, is the content should be giving and helpful. 
um, and and you need to understand what the purpose of the content is because it's, you know to use a marketing term, it's not necessarily lead gen or generation. We're not actually necessarily right, looking right. for a blog or social media to create leads. We're looking at to do something that we would call lead nurturing, um, which again is kind of a marketing term. So the, the biggest thing is is kind of understanding the role it plays. But but if you're up for it, Gary, I'd be happy to kind of dive into some specifics behind how I think a small law firm should do blogging or do social media or do email or, or even some tips around websites. Well, absolutely. So there it is. Uh, blogs, uh, websites, social media, email marketing. Um, let's dive in. Let's start with blogs. Uh, give me, give our listeners the what and how. Yeah. So, I mean, and you can obviously speak to this too. I, I mean, First, it's just deciding on the right topics, but you already you already hit this for us. I mean, you want to you want to provide content that's educational, and you also need to remember that it's for your target market. It's not for other lawyers, right? So, right. number one, you're not creating content for a law school textbook, right? Right. Think about common situations your clients are in. Think about common questions they have, and that's what you 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 blog about. So, if you're a family law attorney. You know, you could create a dozen blogs just about different situations of how divorce affects kids. Right. Right. So, you know, three ways to shield your kids from the divorce process, you know, um, how to make divorce smoother on your kids, what you need to know if you have kids and are looking to get a divorce. Right. So like you can get real like you can create so many topics just off kind of focusing on one set of circumstances or or one question. So when you reverse engineer it like that and think about the questions your your prospects have, your clients have and the situations they're in, you can usually come up with topics pretty easily. And then from there, um, the other tip I'd like to give is, is it's really helpful if you come up with two to four main points. So three tips right. for this, three ways to do that. And then here's how a blog writes itself. You write one paragraph for each point. You have an intro and a closing and you're done. Yeah. Yeah, I actually give my clients the advice that in case you're struggling with this, uh, just remember your most recent interaction with a client and make some notes of what they were asking. What's next? Uh, what do I do, need to do here? I mean, they've got it. They've got the content in front of them every day, right? Uh, yep. And it's real. And if it's like three clients asking the same question, guess what? Their prospect, prospects and other clients are going to ask them the same question. So they You're got right. the content every You're day. right. And here's the question that usually comes up from there is like, okay, how often should I do it? And, you know, it's interesting. This is kind of where I'm going to go back to what I was saying a minute ago is, is you need to understand why you're doing these things first. And one of the themes over at Spotlight Branding, my company, is, you know, we, we really think that SEO – is overrated. It's something that gets that gets talked about too much. Look, and we could do a whole episode on it, so I, I won't say more right. than this unless you ask me. But um, <laughs> but here's the short version that I hope helps your listeners. Not everyone can succeed in ranking on the first page of Google. It's just literally impossible unless you're in like a really small town. There are just <laughs> if there's a hundred lawyers that do what you do, you can't all be on the first page of Google. So certainly, there must be more to the internet than just where you show up on Google. So let's take blogging, for example. A lot of people think you blog to help your SEO. This is true. But to actually achieve results and rank on the first page of Google, you'd have to blog a lot. And you'd have to do a lot of other things that SEO companies do. So... I'm not saying let's go. let's let's Mark let's hold on that because you I actually knowing where the conversation might lead to near the end of this um, I want to come back to this because um, I'm definitely interested in learning more about why not all the focus on SEO I'm not an expert in the area but I've read a lot of similar things about why it's no longer uh, the pot of gold okay so let's we'll come back to that at the end. But I do want to move on to the second point, um, the second strategy you consider critical for content marketing, and that's websites. So again, for our listeners, what and how? Yeah, so I like to think of a website as a digital brochure. 
Mm-hmm. You know, like that's really what it is at the end of the day. And and so if it's a digital brochure, what does it need to have? You know, it needs to quickly give people the right information. You know, here's who here's who we are. Here's what we do. I think one of the things that makes a great website is when you feature these pieces of content that we're going to be talking about on, on, on this show today. So if you've got blogs, you know, feature those on your homepage. If you have videos, feature a couple of those on your homepage. Um, I always like to ha- see a website have some sort of call to action beyond just schedule a consultation. Maybe that's a like a free resource they can download, you know, and, and so you're still capturing someone's contact information. But when you kind of reframe a website as a digital brochure and recognize that a website doesn't actually create clients, it's actually something that potential clients visit. Something else created that visitor, right? I mean, right. you know, but, but but the website itself didn't create that visitor. Um, it kind of reframes the responsibility of the website. And so if the responsibility of the website is is that brochure, another way to look at it, and I know you, this will align with you, is the job of the website is to build to build credibility, right? Right. Yeah. To, to build connections. Yeah. So let, let's feature content that showcases your expertise. Let's have testimonials. Let's have free resources. And let's make it clear what you do. You know, it's fascinating that you said the credibility, because as you were speaking about it being uh, a brochure, uh, I've always kind of, when I'm explaining to a a lawyer who's not necessarily marketing savvy, and they're all, you know, wound up about their website, I said, you know, um, do we need a website? I say to them, well, basically, a website in 2023 is like the old uh, business card. It proves you're in business. So it, it does speak to that credibility. And you have to have one. But the more content you have to show, because like you said, with a blogging or social media, which we're going to get into, um, that won't bring you the clients, right? Um, But, and I've heard this too, and maybe you can touch on it uh, briefly. The average uh, time a person spends on a website is under a minute. Mm -hmm. It's like they they go just to make sure you're real, right? That's, I know I hear my clients say how frustrating that is, but it's just a fact of marketing these days, right? It's like you put all this work because you've got to have a good website. But at the end of the day, if they've got an attention span of 40 seconds, what's the most important thing you need to have on your website? Content. Yeah. Right? Well, you know, it's funny. I was going to say, though, but what do you think increases that average time on a website? Yes. More content, more, and, more knowledge, and, more value. Right. And giving it to them in different forms. Right. So some people might be up for skimming a blog, but somebody else might want to watch a video, you know, so I I don't think that's on our list to discuss today, but I'll just throw it out. There's a quick bonus. Everything that a lawyer would write a blog about, pull out your phone and record a short video talking about the same thing you wrote about and start a video library on your website and on YouTube. And so now somebody can read something or they can watch something. I love that because also they could be watching it while they're at the gym. And uh, for those, um, I know lawyers are not known for their perfectionism. <laughs> not at all. Uh, they don't have to worry about production value. It's the quality of the content. You're helping your clients or prospects with an issue. You're passing on information. You're passing on knowledge, right? Educational. Great point, Mark. Uh, next up, social media. And I know we could have like 10 episodes alone on this topic, but can you give us the short and skinny on social media? I'll I'll do my best. So let let me kind of reframe it like I did some of the other things and then kind of give some quick tips. But, you know, don't think of social media as as a source of business for your firm. Right. I, I just I don't think a lot of people are going to Facebook or TikTok to find their lawyer. And so that shouldn't be the intention of having a social media presence for the firm. The, in my opinion, the uh, intention and the purpose should be, number one, to stay in touch with your existing network, right? Your clients, your past clients, referral sources, like social media, you can use it the same way we as people use it, right? To stay in touch with people. And then the second reason to have social media for your law firm is, is kind of going back to what we were talking about with the website. It's just another way to build credibility, to put mm-hmm. information out there, you know, especially this younger generation. Yeah. They're like, talk about not spending a lot of time on your website, but if they go to your website and see links for social media, they're likely to check that out 
and actually learn more about your firm through social media, right? So it's, it's so true. Like they're on their phone more than they're on their computer. And what is a TV? What 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 is a TV? Let alone cable. I mean, no, every everything's in their hand. Yep. Everything's in their hand. Yep. So let me give kind of the quick nuggets, and, and I'm curious to know what you think. But you know, I do think that posting regularly is important. Like I, I would post at least once a day. Um, people. People don't see everything you post on social media, so so you actually have to post more frequently. Um, but it's honestly, it's the same strategy we already talked about with the blogs and the videos. It's just giving away information. And as a matter of fact, the best strategy for social media is to multiply your content. So if you've created blogs and you've created videos, share that on social media, and you can share all of that more than once. Yeah, you know, um, share links to different pages on your website. Share quotes. People love quotes on social media. Um, so share your blog, share videos, share quotes, share pages from your website. And, and when, you, when you do that and you rotate through that, it's actually pretty easy to put at least one thing out you know, every day of the week. I always tell the clients because they're concerned about how much time, right? And I, get, I, I like to keep things really uh, short and sweet for clients, right? They're busy. Lawyers are always busy. I call, repurpose repurpose everything exactly and what you're talking about you have a different versions for the way different people take their information but you don't you don't need to recreate the content you've got it all you've got tons of content just repurpose it and, and how about this the time yeah how about this you like if you if, if, if they're if they're gonna do this themselves do it all at once for the whole month sit right. down and create 20 pieces of content and it's not as hard as it sounds because if you if you if you wrote even just one blog, you could probably share that three or four times this month on social media. So that's you know just say just say something a little bit different about the blog each time, right? And there's three or four posts. Um, you can even pull a couple of quotes from your blogs, and now those become their own posts. Grab a couple of pages from your website. There's a few posts. Um, and if you have videos you've done in the past. You could just reuse those. It's okay to rinse and repeat. And all of a sudden, you know, you can fill 20 because you got 20, 20 business days in a, in a month. So honestly, if you sit down and do this, you know, um, at once, I mean, it's it, sure it's great to do it on the fly. I'm not saying, you know, but if they need a system for this, an yeah. hour a month, sit down and, 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 and fill in the content calendar for the month. Mark, I'm going to steal that from my clients because I'm huge on systems and habits. And not only is that good for systems and habits, it's also good because the change in focus, right? When the lawyers are focused on a client um, uh, function, whatever it is, uh, preparing for a trial or writing a document or whatever, it's a different part of the brain, a different part of focus. When they're, work when they're focused on this, it's they can make it more fun. So when you say that to strategize, get it, do it all at once, then their focus is all in the same. I like that. I'm going to steal it. I'm I mean, honestly, we, we even do it that way, right? I mean, yeah, we, create, makes sense. we write the blog, we create the social media content, we do it all at once, and then we send it to the client all at once because, right. yeah, I, you're not going to bounce between doing legal work and creating a, a, a post for social media. Absolutely. That, it's way harder. That, yeah, absolutely. I love that. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Email marketing. And, you know, we've been, we were talking yes. and I'm, <laughs> I, I'm skeptic. I'm looking forward to this one. I'm, I'm really skeptical on email marketing myself, but I'm open. I'm always open. So my first still relevant. Yeah. Why and how and what, what they should be doing with it. Well, let's kind of go back to where we started. We were just talking about content marketing as a whole, right? And, and I've kind of positioned this idea. It's the foundation of marketing, right? Everyone's going to interact with it. Um, the, the, the deeper piece of that is how important it is to stay in touch and stay top of mind. So I'm sure you would agree, Gary, that in general, top of mind awareness is important for, for lawyers. Yes? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and that... And that concept existed since before the internet, right? Um, you know, so so when we're looking at something like email newsletter, and honestly, social media too, but especially email newsletter, it is the easiest tool that we have with one press of a button to stay in touch with your entire contact database. Certainly, 
it's not as effective as a call mm. or getting coffee, right? Or a personalized email. But if you've got hundreds or even thousands of people that you've built in your contact list, that not, and that's not just past clients. It could be prospects that never became clients. It could be colleagues that could be referral sources but aren't. Yeah, yeah. And you'd be and 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 you'd be surprised at how people come out of the woodwork from something as simple as an email newsletter. And I can give some tips in a minute for how to how to how to kind of easily do one. But you'd be surprised how many people generate more referrals from their existing network just because they send an email newsletter every month. And they're so, top of mind. Yeah. This really is, is really critical, Mark, because, you know, the average person is uh, looking for any kind of service. They're going to look and they're going to think look to where they last heard a name or referred. Exactly. Or, or, saw, or saw something. And that's why this is critical. Exactly. Um, I don't want them to have to look. I yeah. want them, you know, and, and here's the Make thing. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't even matter if they opened it or not. Your, right. your, your, your name. Your, Staying in touch, you know, yeah. and yeah. and so sure, people hate getting email. People hate getting email newsletters. But I tell you what, it works. We have clients that have in. We've had some. Like, I don't like promise this to everybody, but we've had yeah. clients that have increased their referrals by a hundred percent. They've doubled yeah. their referrals, not only but primarily because of sending an email newsletter every month. Clearly. Okay, I I think I've been converted. <laughs> Let um, me give the quick, do kind of want the quick tips on how to put one together. Okay, sure. Go for it. Yeah. So for your audience, and this is where it's great because we're going to use everything we've already talked about, right? So, I mean, first of all, just use something like MailChimp or Constant Contact, something where you can create like a template, um, you know, if you're going to do it yourself, put your logo in, use your colors, but create a template, create a system, right? You like systems, so do I. Create a yeah. system that you can just rinse and repeat every month. And here's going to be your system. You've got a template and you're going to put your most recent blog in as, as the featured piece of content. If you have a video, you're going to also add that as like the featured video. Then you just have a little introduction at the beginning where you just kind of say hi to your email list. Thank them for, you know, any potential referrals or anything. Share any news or announcements if you have any. And that's it. You don't need 17 things in your newsletter. Yeah. Have a little introduction. Add content that you've already created and push that out to your email list and just use the same template every month. It's crazy. It's crazy the doors that open up, not just referrals, but being offered opportunities to speak and do things like that just because you're, you're staying top of mind with your entire network. You know, it's that simple. Fantastic. Okay, we are winding down, Mark. Now, final, final pearls of wisdom. Law firm is very limited in their resources, and they can only choose one of the four. <laughs> Which one is it? You're, you already know my the, answer. It's, it's well, okay. I mean, to be fair, we're going to exclude website from this, right? Because it's like I think you kind of you got to have it. it. You yeah. got to have it. Yes. To be honest with you, if you're only going to do one of the things we talked about, it's the email newsletter because I knew you were going to say else, that. <laughs> everything else is more passive, yes. right? Like I publish a blog, but that's only valuable if somebody like finds it. I'm on social media, but that's only valuable if people kind of see it. But with an email newsletter, you're actually pushing it out to everyone on your list. Even if they don't open it, like a hundred percent of them receive it. And I'll, I'll leave, I'll leave your audience with this statistic to make my point about newsletter. There was okay. a study done years ago from Texas Tech School of Business on law firms. They found that about 83% of your network is willing to refer to you, but that only 29% actually are. So most law firms are only getting about one third of the referrals that their existing network is willing to give them. Is an email newsletter the only solution for that? No, of course not. But one click of a button, I can stay top of mind with everyone. It's a no-brainer. It's as obvious right. as a business card was 20 years ago, in my experience. Okay, so to wrap up, and I promised you we'd come back to it. Uh, you were hitting upon uh, why uh, SEO is no longer the, we could use any number of expressions, but uh, I, I- The holy grail? Time. 
The, that's the exact expression I was looking for. I just got tongue tied. Uh, now I understand too, uh, you're going to be giving away a link to your anti SEO uh, report and that will yes. be in the promotional material. So very briefly, and I'm really interested in this. I, I'm, I hope our listeners are uh, just a few key points on why, I mean, you did, you did start out, right? Uh, unless you're in a small town, um, but can you give us some more on why well, yeah, I mean, these other just, things you've just, talked about, right? Yeah, I mean, if there was only one billboard in town, right, you wouldn't all pay for the hope, the hope of being on it, not not even right. the guarantee of being on it, right? Like you know, um, and when you think about, to some degree, that is what Google is. There's only so many spots on the first page, even though there's different keywords. The bottom line is when you compare the amount of competition to the amount of the amount of space there is essentially available, like only a few firms are going to get a lot of traction in their Google ranking. And so the fact that everyone's chasing after it is really kind of silly when you look at it that way. So that's reason number one that I want to reframe SEO. You can't all succeed. It's a zero sum game. The second thing is there's a lot of stuff that you can be doing that your focus doesn't need to be SEO, but SEO distracts from it. So if everything we talked about today, blog, social media, video, website, if you're creating those things focused on Google robots, instead of focusing on connecting with people and building your credibility mm. And staying in touch and nurturing. Critical point. You're like not only are you focused on the thing that you're probably going to fail at, but you're missing all the value that comes from reframing why you do all of these things. Yeah. So we do have a report that I hope they'll download yeah. from the link, our, our anti SEO report that explains our position on this further and dives into these alternatives a little bit further as well. Well, I just want to add more, one more thing to that, uh, Mark, as you, as you were speaking, I also the cost, right? The reality is today, if you want to bump your SEO, you're paying for all kinds of ads, right? And Google ads and all this. And I know one thing, I may not know a lot, but I know one thing, lawyers don't like to waste money. And if you're chasing after, I love that analogy. If you're chasing after that one billboard and you're throwing tons of cash at it, when these other strategies that you've shared with us today are much more cost effective and effective in general. Wow. I hope our listeners download your report. Thank you so much, Mark. It's been a pleasure having you on the show today. Yeah, it was a pleasure. I hope we, uh, hope we challenged everyone's thinking and also gave them some inspiration to either go do this themselves or if they are going to hire an agency, you know, make sure that yeah. agency aligns with the strategy. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And thank you to our listeners. We'll be back soon with another episode of The Law Biz. Um, as always, I'd like to thank our friends at Answering Legal for presenting the show. You can see watch The Law Biz on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. If you're interested in joining the show, you can reach out to me directly at gary at ontrackcoach.com. Thanks very much. We'll see you soon. Have a great day. Thanks, Mark.